I feel like I'm going to explode. Yeah. Somebody said, well, you look like you're about to. You're, you're <laughs> swelling. <laughs> Hallelujah. My goodness, I tell you what. <clears throat> Nothing better to feast upon than the Lord. All right. Man. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Yes, and I've tasted, Brother Dave, yeah. Brother Fleece, I've tasted. And I can tell you he is good. Amen. Who wasn't used to a little cracker commercial or something? Was Andy Griffith? Andy. Good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Jesus is good. Amen. I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And you might as well talk to this wall over here yeah. if you're going to try to convince me otherwise. Yeah. Amen. Right. You might as well find you a fence post out in the middle of a cow pasture Amen. and talk to them a while because you can't convince me. Once you've tasted of the goodness of the Lord, yeah. you ain't going to be able to convince me that Amen. he's not real. Amen. Yes. He is real. Exactly. And he is sweet. Absolutely. I know. <laughs> oh, I feel good this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Amen. I know I wish the house was full, but that didn't take my victory. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Right. My goodness. We're if you have right. your King James Bible with you this morning, turn to Matthew, the 26th chapter. You know, I find it strange sometimes uh -huh. the way the Lord gives you sermons. Yeah. It might, a sermon might come through a comment that you hear one of your saints say, Amen. Come on. <laughs> a comment might come from something, I mean a sermon might come from something that you read, an email that you get, something somebody posted on Facebook. Or right. Along those lines, maybe a book that you picked up and read a few yeah. lines out of. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they come from songs. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Come and that's where this sermon here was birthed this morning. I was listening to the radio station this week and some of the music programs I hear for the first time that the listeners hear because I don't have time to sit there and listen to all of the programs that we have Yeah. as far as the music programs go. So I was sitting there and I was listening. There was a song that they played. I couldn't tell you who sung it. I don't even know the name of it for sure. But there was a line in there that said, Be sure that Peter knows there is hope after the rooster crows. All right. Oh, hallelujah. And I got thinking about old Peter. Yeah. And I got thinking about how bold he was. Mm -hmm. And all he was full of boldness. Amen. Right. We'll read here in the 26th chapter of Matthew, the 31st verse, just how mm -hmm. bold he was. Yeah. But I got to thinking about how it reminded me of us. All right. A lot of times this that you can you can apply this to when we first got yeah. saved, of course. Because when you first get saved, I mean, you're ready to fight the devil. Amen. Amen. Right. You feel like that they, nothing can stop you. There's <clears throat> nothing. There's no wall too high right. for you to cross over. Amen. Amen. There's nothing going to stop you. Right. And that's when Peter was. Yeah. Come on. And not just at those times, but at other times. When you're on the mountaintop, you think, this is it. I'm never going to turn back. Yeah. I'm never going to mess up again. Come on. I'm never going to sin again. Come on. Some people you run across, <laughs> you think that's the kind of attitude they have. Right. Amen. They've reached perfection and they're just waiting for you to get there. Come on. Amen. Come on, preach. And Peter might have come across like that to some people because he was pretty bold. Yeah. Listen to what he said in Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning of the 31st verse. The Bible says, Then Jesus saith unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. Right. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock mm -hmm. shall be scattered abroad. Yeah. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. And Peter answered and said unto him, here's the boldness that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yeah. yet will I never be offended. Come on. Jesus then says to Peter, Verily I say unto you, verse 34, mm -hmm. that this night before the cock crow, mm -hmm. thou shalt deny me thrice. Mm -hmm. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yeah. yet will I not deny thee. Come on. Likewise, also said all the disciples. All right. Peter makes this bold statement, and I'm sure every one of us, if we had not made it, we'd have thought it. Lord, I'll never let you down. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'll never turn the back on you. Come on. I'll never again Come on. go back. Right. I'll never mess up. Yeah. Amen. Come on. You might not have said it, but certainly we've got enough Christians that walk around with that attitude. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Especially when somebody else messes up. Right. Yeah. Can I preach for a few minutes this morning? Amen. Especially when somebody else messes up, certainly we can't compare us to them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They messed up. Sure they did. <laughs> All of us have the capacity to mess up. Amen. Yeah. Plain old human. <clears throat> Plain old human, Brother David said. Yeah. So it's strange to me, shouldn't be because this is what it is, uh -huh. but it seems kind of strange to me, maybe the spiritual side of me, how in the world... We can treat others the way we do when they mess up whenever we're capable of doing the same mess they did. All right. Peter, he stands there boldly and so does all the other disciples, but the Bible doesn't quote them. Mm. said, I'll never deny you. Yeah. If I have to go all the way to the death, right. I'll go with you. Yeah. I will not deny you. So Peter stands here, Brother Tyler, and he boldly proclaims, I won't. We find him in the same chapter, 34 verses later, drop down to the 69th verse. We're still in Matthew 26. Peter, after he has proclaimed that he would never turn his back on the Lord, he would never deny the Lord. The Bible says, now Peter said, this is after they have arrested Jesus. <coughs> Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was, Je was with Jesus of Galilee. Now here's Peter's opportunity. Here's Peter's chance to make good on his word that he said on them. And I have no doubt whatsoever how sincere Peter was when he spoke to Jesus those words. Come on. I guarantee you, he believed with all of his heart, with all of his spirit at that moment, there ain't no way. I'll never deny you. Yeah. I'll never turn my back. I'll never, I'll never fall. Mm. I'm in this thing 100%. I'm going all the way. Yeah. I'll never mess up. Come on. The damsel approaches him and says, you were, the one, you were one of those with Jesus. And you know what he says? The Bible says in the 70, 70th verse, but he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. All right. Verse 71. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him yeah. and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. And again, he denied with an oath. He swore to him, yeah. I do not know the man. And after a while, unto him, they, they that stood by, said unto Peter, and said to Peter, Surely, Thou art also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Yeah. Your speech gives you away. Right. We can tell that you've been with him. Amen. Did you know those that you hang around with will begin to rub off on you? Right. Good or bad. Amen. That's right. Good or bad. True. They said we can tell that you've been with him. Yeah. We can tell that you're one of them. Come on. So to convince them that he's not one of them, he's not one of those Jesus followers, what's he do? He begins to cuss. Yeah. And to swear. Yeah. Saying, I know not the man. He begins to cuss and swear, I know not the man. Yeah. And immediately, the cock crew. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah. Can you imagine as he hears the rooster crows? Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. What conviction must have gripped his heart. Yeah. Oh, the feeling of sorrow. Listen, I've been there. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Oh. I have proclaimed with the backbone of the Holy Ghost that I'll never forsake you, Lord. I'll never mess up. I'll never turn back. I'll never fail you. Guess what? I did. I did fail. I did fall. Yeah. I have messed up. If you're looking for a perfect preacher, I might be able to give you a list of a few that think they are, but there ain't any that I know of that are for sure perfect. Amen? Amen. So he swears, he cusses, he says, I don't know who he is. And the cock crows. And the Bible says, And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, 
Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out, and he wept bitterly. Now that word bitterly there, in the Greek, could not have any more stronger meaning than it does. It means a violent cry. It means a sharp, piercing sorrow. Oh, have you ever been there before? Amen. I've been there before. Oh, my, 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 where you failed him. You feel like you've messed up beyond fixing. Right. No doubt that's how people, I can't even, I can on the one hand realize what he was feeling. On the other hand, I wasn't there in the flesh with Jesus. Mm. One, of the, one of the books says that Jesus looked at him when the cop crew. Mm. One of the gospels says that when the cop crew, that as, the, as it crawled the third time, that as it crawled and Peter stood there in the hallway, mm. that Jesus looked, no doubt, through the open doors of the judgment hall mm. and looked into the eyes of Peter. My goodness. Can you imagine that? Mm. And all these things come back to haunt Peter. Right. I stood there with the Master and I said, I won't deny you. I'll never turn my back on you. I'll never fail you. Yeah. I'll never mess up. I'll never go back. Mm. I'll never fall. And the Holy Spirit of conviction grips his soul. Thank God for conviction Amen. this morning. Thank God for conviction this morning. Yes. And the Bible says that Peter went out and he wept bitterly. What would he do after the rooster crows? When it seems like there's no... See, people need to know that there's still hope yes. after the rooster crows. Amen. People need to know that there's still mercy. Yes. Even though you've messed up beyond your way of fixing things. Exactly. Even though, Brother least you you sit in a place where you feel like everything around you has been destroyed because of the wrong, bad choices you've made. You need to know there's still mercy for you today. There's still grace for you today. There's still hope for you today. Amen. That's true. You may have walked away from Him. Yeah. He still waits for you to come back. Amen. You may have withdrew your hand from Him. He's still reaching out yeah. to you. Come on. You may not be able to find mercy inside the church. Yeah. You may not be able to find grace and forgiveness mm. inside the church. But you can find it at the foot of the cross. Amen. <laughs> you can find hope at the foot of the cross. There's still mercy and forgiveness and restoration at the foot of the cross. Yes, thank God. I received a blistering message from a preacher not far from here, not too long ago, raking me up and down the coals for fellowshipping with a preacher that in times past had made a mistake. Mm. Was it a big mistake? Sure it was. Mm. But this preacher said, I don't understand how you can fellowship with such a one. Mm. The very words that were damning the actions of this preacher that was coming out of the mouth of the preacher that was sending me the message this very preacher that was delivering the message had messed up in the past and I'm, I wrote him back and I said don't you believe in restoration where would we be today without a second chance Amen. from Jesus let me ask you this where would we be today without a third chance? Right. And a fourth chance? Exactly. And a fifth chance? Absolutely. And a sixth chance? Amen. To stand and say, how could you fellowship? I'll, I'll tell you how I can fellowship with one mm -hmm. that has been restored. Yeah. Because How can I believe in restoration? Because the book preaches restoration. Oh. How can I believe in forgiveness, Brother Dave? Because the book teaches forgiveness. How can I believe in mercy today? Because the book teaches mercy. Is God a judging God? Is there a hell to shun? Yes. But there is a heaven to gain. And there is grace. Oh, there is grace today for you that have fallen by the wayside. When you fall, when you mess up, whenever you let down God and you feel like your world 
has caved in. There is forgiveness for you. There is hope for you. There is mercy for you. There is a restoration for you today. Peter would find himself after the cock crowed, after the rooster crows, sitting weeping bitterly somewhere. He ran out into the darkness of night and weeps and cries out vehemently, Oh God, what have I done? But Peter would not just find sorrow after the rooster crowed. He would find victory through repentance and restoration and forgiveness from God. There is restoration to be found today. Yes, sir. There is forgiveness to be found today. There is mercy to be found today. There is hope. Somebody needs to tell the world there is hope today in Jesus. There is mercy today in Jesus. There is grace today in Jesus. Amen. That's the truth. There is restoration. Absolutely. In Jesus. Benefits. Peter messed up. Come on. He messed up bad. Yes. But he found forgiveness yes, in the Lord. Mom. And he didn't go out. If he'd have went to one of these big preachers we've got today, yeah. <clears throat> and he said, listen, I failed. Yeah. I feel terrible. I feel awful. Come on. I, I, I can't shake mm. this guilt. I can't shake this terrible feeling. Yeah. Some of the preachers would have said, well, here, take this signed autographed copy of my book mm -hmm. and begin to read and think positive thoughts about yourself. Yeah. No, that wouldn't fix Peter's broken life. Amen? That wouldn't fix Peter's problems. That couldn't put together. That couldn't put back together again. That which Peter had broken. Oh, only repentance. Only so, oh, my, my, my. Only crying out, weeping bitterly and said, Oh, God, forgive me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Repair that which I've broken. I've messed up. Fix me, God. I can't do it. Yeah, come on, tell it. He didn't need a he didn't need an autographed copy of your best life now. He didn't need an autographed copy of the New York Times number one bestseller. He needed a place of repentance, a place to find restoration in God, and he found that. Yes, sir. He found that. Exactly. And you can find it today. Absolutely. If you have fallen, come on. If you've messed up. If you found yourself in the place, yeah. oh, where you just feel like you can't go on any farther, yeah, come on. there's no forgiveness to be found for you. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Amen. <laughs> this morning I faced that old tempter, yes. and he wrestled me all the day long. Amen. He said, You can't win. God knows you've sinned. Yeah. And by sundown, I'm going to steal your song. Yeah, come on. Oh, how those birds. Sing in my heart as I knelt, as I knelt at the altar to pray. That old devil just run as the answer returned. Forgiven is all that the blood yeah. had to say. <laughs> oh, I'll wait to see what the blood has to say. I'll wait to hear from the Lamb. Satan might tell you you're finished today. Unfold your hands, Peter. There's no use for you to pray. Yeah. Oh, God's not going to hear you. He'll just turn you away. But thank God Peter waited to see what the blood had to say. Hallelujah. There is hope after the rooster crows. There is mercy, Brother Sleese, after the rooster crows. There is grace to be found after the rooster crows. That's the truth. And no doubt... Any time after that, uh -huh. think about it. Mm -hmm. Think about it this morning. Yeah. Peter was man, yeah. flesh just like you and me. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, after this happened, the rest of his life, mm -hmm. a rooster's crow would never sound the same. Really? Amen. And you can say today, yeah, it probably brought back all those feelings of guilt and all those feelings that he, all the thought, the remembering that he had messed up. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But I tell you more than that that it brought back. Even after I messed up, God forgave. <laughs> Even after the rooster crawled, there 
there was still mercy to be found. There was still mercy to be found for me. You may feel like the rooster has crowed in your life. You may feel like there is no hope left. There's no mercy to be found. But I'm here to tell you God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of grace. And if you will turn to Him with your whole heart, He will not turn you away. Amen. So Peter finds there's hope after the rooster yes, crows. Praise Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, Praise hallelujah. I guarantee you the rooster never sounded the same Amen. after this for Peter. Oh, my friend, Praise Peter's Lord. weeping, his bitter weeping would only last for the night. Yeah. Joy would come in the morning. Amen. God is a God of restoration. Yes, sir. God is a, the church doesn't put much stock in it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. You mess up and they want to they want to de fellowship you. They, mm -hmm. they don't want to have nothing to do with you. Come on. Amen. I got news for you. The church may throw away broken vessels, but God uses them. Right, Amen. Man. Hallelujah. 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 Right. The church may not have no use for a broken vessel, exactly. but God will use one. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll take a man like Peter who boasted that he never would, yet he did anyway. Amen. Amen. But a man like Peter that went out and knew how to pray, knew how to cry out for mercy, knew how to weep before God and seek His face and cry out and beg for forgiveness, he'll take that man. That man that messed up. If you stood there in Pilate's Hall that day, and heard Peter deny Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. If you'd have heard him deny him, you would have said, well, he'll never be used to God. He'll never be able to be a disciple again. There's no hope for it. Oh, my, my, my. But after the rooster crowed and Peter went out and repented and cried out to God, God would use him in a way that few apostles would ever be used. He would be with John when they walked up to the temple and looked upon the lame man and said, silver and gold have I none but such as I have, give I unto thee. He would be the one that as he passed by and his shadow was cast upon the sick, the sick would get well and his shadow would fall upon the lame and the lame would get up and his shadow would fall upon the blind and the blind would see. Why? Because God is a God of restoration. Yes, sir. God is a God of mercy. Amen. And just because the rooster has crowed don't mean your life is over. Oh, Does not mean the story is the end oh, for you. Great. There's still hope for you. Absolutely. There's still hope for you today. Yes, sir. You may, you may have heard the rooster crow. Come on. But the story is not over. Come on. The story is not over. Yes, sir. There's mercy to be found Amen. today. There's forgiveness to be found yeah. today. Come on. I talked to you about another man today by the name of David. No doubt, King David had the same type of attitude or maybe the same kind of feelings. Maybe I should put it like that. The same zeal. That's a good word. Come on. Had the same zeal as Peter. Yeah. The Bible calls him the only man that the Bible calls a man after God's own heart. Come on. Amen. Come on. A man chosen of God to replace the rebellious soul. Absolutely. A man chosen by God to defeat Goliath and put the Philistines on the run. Right. Amen. I'm sure that if you talk to David mm -hmm. before he messed up, mm -hmm. he would have had the same zeal that Peter had. Yeah. I'm all in. Come on. I'm going 100%. All right. 99 and a half just won't do. Yeah. I'm going to go on. Yeah. I ain't going to fall. Come on. I'm not going to mess up. Come but on. guess what? David messed up. Yes, sir. Somebody told me one time, they were talking about Brother Swaggart. Mm -hmm. I was working at Walmart at the time, and I was reading something, Brother Swaggart, I think. I don't know, somehow he got brought into the conversation. Mm. You mean tell me you still listen to him? Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, listen, buddy. If you're going to throw out every preacher that ever messed up, you're going to have to tear out a bunch of the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to get rid of David. King David, all the Psalms. You can't read none of, that, none of the Psalms that he wrote anyway. Amen. Amen. What did David do? Let's just break it down where we can understand it this morning. <clears throat> David goes out at a time whenever kings should be to war. Uh -huh. We're talking about King David. Right. We're talking about a man after God's own heart. Right. A man that no doubt within himself had thought with his mouth had declared, I'm going all the way for God. Yeah. I'm not going to mess up. 
I'll never deny him. I'll never mess up. I'll never turn away from God. Yeah. At a time when King's supposed to go to war, he's lounging around. See, the, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's and that's what happened to David. Oh. He had an idle mind. Yeah. Couldn't rest. Right. Should have been out. Probably the reason he couldn't rest is because he knew he should have been out on the battlefield fighting with his men. Instead, he's at the house. Amen. Amen. Wearing his fuzzy slippers and his bathrobe. So he goes out on the roof to take a walk, try to get some rest. And guess what's out there? The booby trap, as Brother Carter called it last Sunday morning, that the devil laid. <clears throat> it's Bathsheba yeah. taking a bath. Mm. Amen? Come on. Maybe this was by coincidence, or maybe he had heard Bathsheba takes her bath about that time on top of the roof. Mm. Either way, he goes out and he lusts after her. He lusts after in his heart. They don't stop there. Mm. It doesn't stop there. He doesn't say, oh God, forgive me for lusting. Mm. I'm a married man. I'm the king of Israel. Yeah. No. He sins for her. He lays with her. She becomes with child. Mm. Is that delicate enough? Then David said, I gotta do something about this. First, he tries to get her husband to go lay with her so that her husband will think it's her child. Mm. Then when that doesn't work, he said, well, i only got one more option. And no, it wasn't to repent. Not yet. Right. Got to cover this thing up completely. Got to get him killed. Mm. So what's he do? He murders him. Mm. How's he do it? Not with his own hands, but he might as well have. Yeah. Bible says he killed him. Mm. Right. He said, you sit him out in front of all the army and you all draw back. Sitting to the front lines. Let him be out there fighting. Can you imagine? He's out there fighting the enemy. Mm. Wait a minute. Where are you guys going? Mm. Leave him out there at the front, Brother Scott. Mm. He gets killed. Yeah. Mm. And David might have thought he got by with it. Mm. Some, have you ever thought you got by with something? Amen. A lot of people think they're getting by today. Amen. Amen. That's right. He might have thought he got by with it. I guarantee you there, was, he wasn't, there wasn't no rest for him. Right. Not a man after God's own heart. Amen. Not a man that can write the psalms that he wrote. Right. Not a man that spent so much time with God out on the hillside. I guarantee you, he knew he had messed up. Come on. And he didn't know how to fix it. Right. So God sends a, a man, that, that, that template, that, that is a, that a type of the Holy Spirit to point his finger in David's face in 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. David is about to hear the rooster crow. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. Yeah. And he came unto him and said unto him, mm -hmm. There were two men in one city. Mm -hmm. One was rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds. Mm -hmm. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up and grew up to, together with him. And with his children, and he did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. If you haven't got it yet, he's talking about Bathsheba. Yeah. David had everything he could want. Bathsheba's a husband only had her. Amen. Oh, okay. Only had one. <clears throat> then Nathan says, and a traveler came. He says there came a traveler. Now what was this traveler? The lust of David's flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. What caused him to look on Bathsheba? His flesh. What caused him to sin for her and lay with her? His flesh. What caused him to kill her husband? His flesh. Right. So this traveler, his flesh rises up. His, and what does it say about this traveler? It says a traveler came into the rich man, talking about David, and he spared to take of his own flock of his own herd, to dress it for the wayfaring man that was coming to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man. Who's the man? The traveler. What's he doing? He's feeding the traveler the lamb. David fed the lust of his flesh right. adultery with Bathsheba. Right. Amen? Come on. The Holy Spirit sticking his finger in David's face, Amen. pointing out exactly what happened. Oh, yeah. my, my, my. You may forget. The Holy Spirit don't. Right. Nobody can bring back to your memory what you did. Like the Holy Spirit can bring back to your memory what you did if it's unrepented. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Oh. oh aren't, you, aren't you glad God brings it down where we can understand it? Yes, sir. Apples and oranges. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh, so he took the lamb from this man that only had one. Yeah. And he dressed it, he killed it, he fed it uh -huh. to the rich man. Come on. David fed his lust mm -hmm. with the adultery that he committed yeah. with Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. And David, listen, look how David reacts. Mm -hmm. See if this don't remind you of some good church people today. Come on. When David had heard yeah. that this rich man that had everything mm -hmm. went out and took this one little lamb that this poor man had. Yeah. Instead of taking of his own flock, Come on. he took this one thing this one man had. Mm -hmm. Listen to what happened. David gets angry. Yeah. David's anger was greatly kindled against who? The man. He's fixing to find out that the man, Brother Sleaze, was him. Mm -hmm. right. But before he finds that out, look what he says. Uh -huh. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. Yeah. I'll have him killed. Right. Nobody should get away with this. Mm -hmm. Oh, does that remind you of the judgmental thoughts of a lot of people today? Amen. Amen. When David thought it was somebody else, he was ready to cut them off. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the way the church is. Yes, sir. Yeah. When somebody else messes up, right. we're looking for a stone. To throw at them. Amen. Amen. When somebody else messes up, when somebody else falls, mm -hmm. where's that bag of stones we got around here? Yeah. Where's those rocks? Come on. If anybody deserved it, it's them. Right. So we see that in the head of that old thing pop up here with David. Uh -huh. You see how quick he sits down. Come on. He said, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Now Nathan turns to David. David's standing there. He's angry. Mm -hmm. His righteous indignation is up. Yeah. Who is this man that's done this terrible thing? And Nathan the prophet, a type of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Brother Dave, he turns to King David. Right. And he says, you are the man. Yes, sir. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, my. Can you, I can see it now. Yeah, yeah. He went from standing up and pointing a finger of accusation yeah. to sitting down and said, Oh, Come on, tell me, it. what have I done? Come on. And I can't prove it with Scripture today, but simply the fact that Peter was made out of the same ball of mud that David was, right. I would imagine some of the same, same feelings that Peter had mm. flooded David's soul. Amen. What have I done? Yes. I've been there. Not in the same, don't go tell nobody I had adultery and killed somebody's husband. Not on the same level as that. But sin nonetheless. Amen. I messed up nonetheless. <clears throat> and the convicted power of God grips David's soul. All right. The same way it did with Peter. <clears throat> David stands there, sitting there now, no doubt. Yeah. He hears. He hears. The proverbial rooster crow. Right. What have I done? Come on. What have I done? The rooster just crowed for David. All right. Same grief, the same anguish, yeah. the same bitter tears, no doubt, begin to flow down his face. And to save time this morning, if you jump down to the 13th verse, mm -hmm. the Bible says, David said unto Nathan, yeah. I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. We find in Psalms, the 51st chapter, the repenting prayer of David. Come on. This is after Nathan the prophet had came in. You remember we talked about Peter went out and he wept bitterly. And he repented. Let's see what David's actions were when Nathan said, You're the man that's messed up. When he heard the proverbial rooster crow in his life, David would pin these words in Psalms, the 51st chapter. Have mercy upon me, O God. Oh, wait a minute. You, don't, you mean to tell me he didn't call up the latest 
preacher with the latest fad and find out what can I do to make myself feel better. No, self didn't need to feel better. Self needed to feel bad. Amen? If you sin, I got news for you. If you mess up, thank God you feel bad. Amen? When you need to worry, brothers and sisters, is when you can do whatever you want to do and not feel an ounce of conviction. And I'm afraid that's where a lot of the churches got today. They have overrode the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and seared their mind, their conscience with a rod of hot iron to the fact, to the place where sin does not bother them anymore. Their preacher never mentions it. Just keep thinking positive. It don't matter if you're a practicing homosexual. It doesn't matter if you're a prostitute. It doesn't matter if you're a drunk or a dope addict. Just keep thinking positive. Baloney! Hogwarts! The only hope for you today is to turn to God with a repentant heart and say, have mercy on me, oh God, because I've sinned against you. I've sinned. Oh, nobody can pray like David. Oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Hang with me. I know I've been going a while. We'll finish up in a minute. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. If you want to know how, if you don't know how to pray today to ask God for forgiveness, get you a King James Bible. Yeah. Open it up to Psalms, the 51st chapter. Wow. I can't tell you the times that I've had to pray this in my life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It'll work for you. It'll work for you. Yes. I'm not talking about just reading the words. I'm talking about praying the prayer. On, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Yes. For I acknowledge my transgression. See, there's the confess. There's the confession. Right. And my sin is ever before me. Listen to what he says. He's not looking for a snake to blame. He says, against thee and thee only have I sinned. He didn't blame it on his wife. He didn't blame it on his snake. He didn't blame it on Bathsheba that was taking a bath. Amen. Out there naked on top of the house. He didn't blame it on anybody but himself. If you're ever going to repent, that's the first thing you're going to have to do is realize it ain't nobody's fault but yours. Amen. Peter, when he went out and wept bitterly, I guarantee you, he was not out there saying, well, it's John's fault. It's James's fault. Yeah. It's Andrew's fault. No, he was saying it's Peter's fault. Amen. And if you're ever going to have hope after the rooster crows, you're going to have to decide it's David Fitzgerald's fault. All right. It's Billy Douglas's fault. Absolutely. If you messed up, own it. Come on. You're the one that messed up. Yes, sir. Quit blaming everybody else. Yeah. Quit walking around with a chip on your shoulder believing the world's against you and it's somebody else's fault that you messed up. Come on. Look in the mirror. Admit to God it's, you, it's me that sinned. I sinned against you. Amen. That's what David did. Yes, sir. He said, I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Yeah. You also going to have to realize how bad sin is. We have a whole generation today that think, well, it's not that bad. Yeah. Sin will kill you. Amen. It'll take you farther than you want to stay, keep you longer than you want to. It'll take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Amen. Sin will kill you. Yes, sir. We spent a month or a month and a half, maybe two months preaching on that. Right. Sin is deadly. Amen. You gotta realize it's your fault, and you gotta realize that sin is evil. Yes, it is wicked. Sir. It is not of God. Listen to what he says. Absolutely. He says, hide thy face. <clears throat> oh, wait, let me back up. I'm about to miss out on something important here. <clears throat> Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. I'm in the fifth verse. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. He says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones, listen, that, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Yeah. This convicting, crushing, convicting power of the Holy Spirit that I feel mm -hmm. created me a clean heart. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my enemies. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit Amen. from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. 
David's repenting. Yes. I know that's foreign. That's a foreign concept to the church world as we know it today, because uh -huh. it's not preached from the pulpits. Uh -huh. It's not, it's not wrote about in the books that we, re, that we get off of the Christian bookshelves. Amen? Right. Repentance. Come repentance. Amen? Come on. Amen? You know one of the reasons? One of the main reasons that the Catholic Church mm -hmm. didn't want you to have this book. Mm -hmm. One of the words in there that offended them the most mm -hmm. was repentance. All right. Repentance. You know why? Because all through the time before it was translated into the English the right way and given to common man. Yeah. They would read it in Latin as penance. Mm -hmm. Not repentance. Come on. But penance. Yeah. There's a big difference between repentance and penance. All right. Their way of penance meant you had to go do some works. You had to give some money to the church. Mm -hmm. You had to do the Hail Marys. You have to do whatever it is to make penance for your sin. You have to do something to fix it. I'm here to tell you today, you cannot do anything to fix what you broke. Right. You can't fix it. I know we sit around sometimes with our man-made ways and works and doctrine and super glue as it were. And let me fix this. Let me fix what I messed up. You can't fix what you broke. Come on. Amen. Come on. Only God can fix what you broke. Yes, sir. Listen to what David said in the 16th verse. For thou desirest not sacrifice, yeah. else would I give it. Mm. If there was something I could do to fix it, Mama, I would fix it. All right. But that's not what you desire, Lord. Come on. You desire a heart of repentance. Right. He says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Come on. David could have killed every lamb he could got his hands on and it wouldn't be right between him and God till he repented. Amen. The sacrifices of God, he says, are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. You hear what he's teaching, don't you? You hear what he's saying, don't you? Oh, you can't fix it. You can't fix it. There was hope for David, but he couldn't fix it. There was hope for Peter, but he couldn't fix it. Amen. Amen. I know what sin has done to your life. I know what you've done. I know how terrible and broken you feel. But oh. until you realize there ain't but one place to get fixed. There ain't but one place to get restoration. There's not but one place to get hope. There's not one place but one place to get mercy. And that's Jesus Christ and His sacrifice on Calvary. Until you realize that, you're going to stay broke. Yes, sir. You're not going to be fixed. Come on, say it. David said, if I could fix it, I would. Yeah. Amen. Come on, preach. And people deal with this situation a lot of different ways. Some people, if you belong to the Catholic Church, you go in, you say, I've sinned, I've messed up. Yeah. And what does the priest say? Okay, go do, go do 25 Hail Marys, mm -hmm. do your penance work, give this much to the church, and then you'll be forgiven. So some people try to fix it their self. Right. Amen. Come on. Many people decide to make it up, make up for it on their own. On, I'll just try to live better. I'll just try to do more works. And sadly, more times than not, many people just give up. Right. Because they decide they can't live it. I've done blown it. God won't forgive me. Come on. But God's message for us today and for you out there listening by way of radio and by way of video, there is hope for you Amen. after the rooster crows. Yes, sir. You must realize it's your fault. You must realize where true mercy can be found. You must realize that you cannot fix it yourself. Come on. There is hope for you. There is restoration yes. for you. There is a stark truth in closing this morning that we find in the case of Peter and we find in the case of David. The Bible says in Romans the 5th chapter, the 20th verse, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Did David mess up? Yes, yeah, sin did abound, but grace did much more abound. Did Peter mess up? Oh, 
yeah, you messed up. And where sin abounded, where it seemed great, where it seemed immeasurable, when it seemed that he could not overcome it, thank God grace was bigger than Peter's sin. Grace was bigger than David's sin. Grace is bigger than your sin. Amen. Amen. So if you've heard the rooster crow, yeah. don't give up. There is hope. Amen. Grace. Grace. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. God's got more grace than we give Him credit for. Oh. See, He's got more grace than, and mercy than we do, Brother Sleeve. Yes, sir. We're ready to cut somebody off after they mess up once. <laughs> We're ready to toss somebody to the side simply because they fell into something, even though it was grotesque and it was awful and terrible. Because mm. they fell into sin. Yeah. Well, forget about them. Thank God He ain't like that. Amen. Amen. Thank God there's grace. Yeah. Thank God He's got more mercy than we give Him credit for. Thank God He is a God of restoration. Yeah. If you've messed up today, yes, it's bad. It's terrible. Confess that to God. Ask Him for falling down is not dead. Amen? Yeah. Get back up. The Bible says a just man falls seven times, but gets back up, he rises again. Right. There's hope after the rooster crows. Yeah, absolutely. David said it best, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Yeah. If I could fix it, if there's any way I can mend this thing, I would. Right. If I could fix it. Listen, I broke it, but I can't fix it. Amen. Amen. His grace is greater than we give Him credit for. Yeah. His mercy is more magnificent than we give Him yes. credit for. Amen. It's, it's bigger than our pitiful mind right. can grasp this morning. Amen. Amen. And we could go on and on and on. Yeah. We could talk about how God's mercy mm. intervened. Yeah. Amen. Instead of praying for God to cut people off and send them to hell, we should be praying for God's mercy right. to step in and save them before it's too late. Amen. That dear lady that took all the pills. Yeah. It would be easy for your flesh to sit back and say, well, she did it to herself. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. It's her fault. Yeah. Oh, but the Jesus inside of you speaks and says there's a soul hanging in the balance. Amen. Oh, my my the Spirit inside of you, the Holy Spirit says, get a hold of the throne of God. Begin to cry out for mercy. Amen. For mercy. As we joined hands in our living room, that's what we prayed for. God, let your mercy intervene. Don't let her die lost. Let your mercy move in this situation. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. My, my, my. When the verdict was guilty, mercy walked in. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Aren't you glad for mercy this morning, yeah. Brother Tyler? I'm so glad this morning that I don't have to be good enough. I'm so glad this morning, Brother Sleeves, that that burden don't rest on my shoulders. That I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be sinless. I don't have to be the one that walks the line. And if I ever get out of line, it's over. No. I'm glad today I know that He is more than able. When I mess up, I turn to Him. I go to the blood. When I sin, I go to the blood. When I have a bad thought, I go to the blood. Whenever I have a transgression, I go to the blood. When I trespass against His law, I go to the blood. Because I know I can't do it on my own. Does it grieve me? Yes. Do I feel the holy convicted power of God? Thank God I do. But I know I can't yeah. fix it. i got to go to Him and say, God, I messed up. Forgive me of my sins. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Come on, I can't fix it, but I know Come who on, can. Bro. Amen. Come on. Many of you out there to know you can't, today know you can't fix it. Right. Problem is you don't know who can. I'm trying to tell you this morning who can. Amen. I agree with you. You can't fix it. Right. Oh, but I know a man who can. Who can. Amen. Yes, sir. I can't take a heart that's sin sick and make it over again. Oh, oh but I know a man who can. <laughs> Amen. He can take all your old filthy Wretched life and yes, worship sir. white as snow. There is hope for you today. Amen. After the rooster crows. Amen. You have nothing. Nothing to give him. No sacrifice can you make Come on. that he's interested in. That's right. What he's interested in is you. 
Yes, sir. You can give him you. Absolutely. Say, here I am, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not, take me. I'm yours. Exactly. Lord, I know I've messed up. Forgive me. Oh, it's, it's pitiful. That in the day that we're in, mm -hmm. as intelligent as men are, you have to try and teach people how to repent. Right. Because they've lost that knowledge somewhere along the line. Come on. It's come from, from preachers standing behind pulpits, yeah. delivering some of the biggest load of garbage that's ever been known to the modern day church. All right. People don't know how to repent. People don't know what to do when they mess up. Come like on. I said, they try to fix it themselves or they just give up. You need to know the great fixer-upper today, right. and it ain't you. It's Jesus. Amen. You need to know there's hope today, and it's not in the church. It's not in your doctrine. It's not in your works. It's in Jesus. Right. Amen. True. He can fix what you broke. You can't. Yes, sir. The Bible says, and I'm closing, I promise. Had another scripture for you, but we won't go there. 1 John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins Amen. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. My goodness. First John 2 and 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. Psalms 24, 16 says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Amen. The rooster's crow does not have to be your death call. It can be your wake up call. Right. Amen. True. It can be your wake up call mm -hmm. and realize, oh, I've messed up. God, forgive me. Oh, turn to Him with a repentant heart. He will forgive. He's not going to turn you. I know the devil has told you he'll turn you away. I know the church has turned many people away. Yeah. But Jesus will not. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Amen. And I will turn you away. That's not what He says. He said, I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning has something before we go.